In this video, we're going to take a look at wedges and triangles. Now, wedges and triangles are kind of a broad topic, but they all basically mean the same thing. And what this means is that buyers and sellers are getting compressed and that we're meeting at a point. And there are a multitude of different types of both. There are at least five major ones. So for triangles, what you'll have is you'll have price compressing, bouncing around in two trend lines that are competing. This is a symmetrical triangle, and it is, like all triangles, a constriction of price, a constriction of energy, and needs to be broken by the time you hit the 80% of the way to the apex. So as we start this pattern, you draw two trend lines and if you get past this 80% apex, then it loses its inertia and it just kind of peters out, so to speak. The nice thing about triangles, and this is going to be true with all of them, doesn't matter which flavor, 100 is, let's say, how many points or ticks or pips or whatever that this triangle makes. Once you break out of this, in either direction, you measure 100 points from that trend line break for your target. There are also two other types of triangles that are quite common. There is the ascending, and this simply means that price is gradually going higher. It's running into significant resistance at, say, 900 here at a specific level. And this suggests that we are going to break out to the upside because the buyers are becoming more and more aggressive. As soon as we close above this trend, uh, this sideways uh, resistance line, we start to measure. Same thing over here. If it is 100 points or 100 pips or whatever, we're looking at a gain of 100 from the breakout. There's also the descending triangle which is just simply sellers becoming more aggressive, and then finally they break through resistance. Once they break through resistance, you're looking at a loss of whatever the measurement is. Now remember again, we want to see this happen before 80% to the apex, the point at where these two lines intersect. So in this case, you can clearly see that there is an uptrend line being formed there, and there's resistance here in Amazon. And you can see that this $80 height right here was, in fact, hit. Pretty classic ascending triangle. Here in Citigroup, we had a descending triangle, as shown by the trend line here, and the gap. You have to keep the, in this case, this is a little bit special case because the gap should be thought of as a big green candle. You can see we came down, we bounced a couple times, and then eventually broke down. You can also see clearly that we hit our target. So again, think about what's happening here. The sellers are overwhelming the buyers. The buyers finally give way and they have to close their positions, which just speeds up the process going forward, allowing for a fulfillment sometimes much quicker than you potentially think can happen. And finally, we have the symmetric triangle, symmetrical triangle. As you can see on deer here on the weekly chart, there's a trend line there and there's a trend line there. We break out above there. We're looking for well, you know, let's just call it $13. So $13 from the breakout of eight, uh, 80, I should say, is 93. And you see, we did in fact fulfill that target. You'll see this time and time again. Uh, triangles are by far probably one of the most commonly traded patterns. Now, I also mentioned wedges. And, and wedges are very much like triangles. There's only two that we'll focus on here. There is the rising and the descending wedge. And what's happening here is that we are getting buying pressure, but it's starting to tighten up like a spring. It's got a little bit of a tilt to it. That being said, when you break the down line, or the, the uptrend line, you break down through it, 
then you start looking for the bottom of the pattern because these people who had been buying are running into overhead resistance and finally capitulate. Same thing with a falling wedge. You know, we're, we're falling in the market and then all of a sudden, for whatever reason, the sellers run out of momentum and we start aiming for the top of this pattern. These are relatively common patterns. Um, they aren't as common or as highly traded as triangles, but they are worth paying attention to. So here in John Deere, we have a little bit of a rising wedge here. You can see that there was certainly upward pressure here on this trend line. And you can definitely see that there was a bit of resistance here at this trend line. And look what happened. We ended up breaking through it on this candle pretty, pretty quietly. It wasn't as eventful of a move that you would think. And then we drifted lower and then gapped down to hit this figure here. And here we have a falling wedge in Goldman Sachs that you can see there's a little bit of a trend line there. And there's trend line there. Well, we break through it. Not only do we hit this target, but we gap into it and continue to go much higher. So these are, you know, relatively common patterns. I would say, of course, triangles are probably more reliable than wedges just because they're easier to spot. Wedges tend to be, you know, a little convoluted at times, and sometimes you have to use a little bit of artistic license. They are tradable, though. They are very tradable events.